there are those who believe the grave is not an ending, but a gateway to a new life. They believe they remember their past lives, spanning centuries of history. They believe their memories are proof of reincarnation. I have no doubt that I've lived before in the 17th century. Some believe they relived history when they met. Peter and I were together 300 years ago. Some believe they died to be reborn. They say they know they've lived before because they can recall memories of their past lives. Skeptics say it's a fantasy. Believers say it's not. We set them a challenge to find the evidence of their previous lives. In this life, Peter Hume has been a bingo caller. Under hypnosis, he becomes someone very different. Going back through your childhood, we're going even further and further back through your childhood. And now we're going beyond that childhood, beyond the time when you were born, into that other life when you were born before. I have a pike stuff. A pike stuff? Yeah, sword. And I carry a small dagger in the back of my belt. This person that Peter became under hypnosis uh, emerged as a foot soldier in the Parliamentarian Army. I knew that he hadn't been interested in history, so it was amazing to me that he was coming out with information uh, about the 17th century and the Civil War. What's the name of your immediate captain? Captain? Yeah. You have a captain. Captain yeah. Leveries. We had to go out and do research, and it was amazing that the statements he'd made and the information he'd given us, we were finding was correct. There's no other explanation as far as I'm concerned. It has to be reincarnation. But can Peter prove it? To find out, we retraced the ghostly footsteps of a long-dead Cromwellian soldier. Peter Hume also remembered a village called Halem in Nottinghamshire. We took him back there. Is this really where he lived 350 years ago? Under hypnosis, he talked of a church called St. Michael's, and here it was. He was also sure that when he was here three centuries ago, the pews faced right. But these faced left. Something seemed wrong. The church inside has changed completely around over the years. In fact, where the um, pews are now, they used to be the other end, facing the other way. Plus, the altar is this end now instead of the top end. Then, in the church archives, we discovered this original plan. It showed the pews had not been moved. But the entrance had. Centuries ago, the door was on the opposite wall. For anyone entering from this side, the church would indeed have appeared the other way around. Under hypnosis, some talk of many past lives and can switch between them under the control of an expert hypnotist like... On the trail of Peter Hume's Cromwellian soldier, our next stop was Scotland. Under hypnosis, he'd talked of a Civil War campsite near Kelso. There's no official record of it, but Peter seemed to recognise this dried-up ravine. Well, I'm sure this is the site that we came to in 1646. There were about 500 of us. The cavalry were up on my left over there amongst those trees. The musketeers would be up the top cleaning the muskets. I'd be on sentry duty at times. To put Peter's claim to the test, we called in experts with metal detectors to search for Civil War relics. Oh. 
in one. Our hall included musket balls and relics typical of a Civil War encampment. No one could explain how they got there, except Peter. It proves to me that it actually was a campsite and I was here 350 years ago. They have no record of it ever being a campsite. So as far as I'm concerned, I was the only one who knew about it. On the shores of Loch Martmaham in Scotland, Peter Hume found what he believed was one of his Cromwellian battlegrounds. Now, the year that we attacked this fort, I believe, was late uh, 1649. There was muskets being fired. I heard a couple of cannon shots, and there was a lot of screaming and shouting going off. Some of the uh, Raleigh soldiers ran across this causeway to escape. I think that one or two of them actually fell into the lock itself. There was people firing from the fort, and there was return fire coming from that direction. On the lock shore is the overgrown ruin of an old fort, but could Peter have read about it being attacked, perhaps in the local archives? No, as, as far as I'm aware, none of the local history records that we have here uh, refer to any action having taken place at the, the castle at Martinham. We have a, a recent publication here on the castles of southwest Scotland, and uh, the author hasn't been able to come up with any historical information about the castle. Yet a map drawn before the Civil War shows the castle intact, and another drawn after shows it in ruins. But could we find solid proof? <laughs> There must be musket balls around somewhere, even uh, cannonballs. Strong signals are detected. There is something metallic under the water. All of these signals are very strong and would be of a fairly considerable size. They would be at least four feet below the surface of the water. It's impossible to retrieve them, uh, given the equipment that we've got here. If there are cannonballs deep in the silt, the lock holds its secret a while longer. Peter Hume also believes he's met a past life relative. Barbara Hartfield is in no doubt that she was his daughter in Cromwellian times. We brought them together for the first time in Halem. Would their memories match? What memories do do you have of your fifth birthday? Um, yes, I, I remember the ribbons you gave me for um, my birthday. Yes. And I think my present was a wooden horse. Well, that's and one I think that you I made. Would have made it, wouldn't oh, yeah, you? that's right. With, yes. with, with the knife that the tinker gave me when he came to the village once. That's right. Because so I have no knowledge of your childhood at all, from the age of about five. Mm. But the simple reason I think, well, perhaps I died a year or two years after that. I just don't know. Mm. So. You died in 1665, For instance, yeah. as, as you think you did. Yeah. Um, if I was five years old or six years old in that, that um, time, what happened to me? After casting their minds back three centuries, the two are convinced. Uh, we've discussed memories of that time, and a lot of them check out. We have the same memories about the same dates. Well, I'm 99% certain that after all the research we've done, that. She was my daughter in this past life. But psychologists say that past life memories are simply what we've learned in this life. The brain absorbs vast amounts of information without us realizing. There's something called the cocktail party syndrome. Um, you are often at a party or a social gathering, lots of people talking around you. You have no idea what they're saying until someone mentions your name or they gossip about you. And suddenly you realize you were analyzing everything everyone was saying at at least a superficial level all the time. Much of what we experience throughout the day, we store in our memories without even knowing it. So what people remember now as reincarnation, as a past life, might very well be very simply the result of something they came across in a dentist's waiting room when they were reading a magazine or a book or overhearing a radio documentary or just a conversation many years ago. It's like a lot of the skeptics, they will say, oh, you've read this in books or you've learned it from school. No, no way, no way. 
From history books to tombstones, it is possible to glean information about past lives. Psychologists are convinced this explains the phenomenon, although they do accept that people with past life memories are genuine in their belief. The believers say that's a convenient cop-out. If you have the documentation, they say that's where you got it from. If you don't have any documentation, they say, well, how can you prove it? Yet reincarnation is the foundation of religion and belief the world over. Most people have a need to have a meaningful explanation as to why they are here today and what their purpose on this earth is. One way of trying to come to terms with the fact that you're here now and gone tomorrow and that that's it.